Machine learning is so much fun, especially with tons of people working on one project. You're working on cutting edge tech, training is super easy, and your teammates are all smiles. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Machine learning projects are... <laughs> Okay, seriously, unless you're flush with cash and got GPUs at your disposal, as well as a battle-hardened team with years of experience, ML projects, especially collaborative ML projects, can be a major pain. This was an epiphany that I had not too long ago while working with a group of three for a university project. For our project, our goal was to fine-tune a machine translation model so that it could do better at translating casual dialogue between two languages. None of us had a GPU, so we decided to use Google Drive to store our dataset and Colab notebooks to develop. Long story short, we finished the project, but by the end of it, we were at each other's throats. Constantly, throughout the project, we were rewriting code, having our training get interrupted, overwriting data, redoing each other's work, and generally trying not to snap our computers in half. After going through this experience, I couldn't help but wonder, why was this so messy? And more importantly, for your everyday ML practitioners, is there a better way to work on group projects? The answer to the last question is yes, and later in the video, I'll discuss a script that I wrote, as well as some research I've done to create the best ML group project setup. However, to answer the first question, some background is in order. Those of you who are proficient in coding and machine learning are probably familiar with what I'm about to talk about, so feel free to skip ahead using the timestamps below. Collaborating on code projects used to be quite challenging back in the day. Programmers would often share their code via means like email, flash drive, or floppy disk. As one can imagine, version control, aka the act of keeping everyone up to date on the same version of their code with the ability to roll back changes if need be, was a nightmare. In these times, programmers working on the same code files would constantly be overriding each other's changes. Enter Git an open source version control system developed in 2005 that was built to address these exact problems. Nowadays, virtually all companies and group programming projects use Git. With Git, programmers just need to use a few commands and Git manages the rest. How it works is that for each project, Git represents one version of your code as a node in a chain or branch. When programmers update their code, they simply commit a new version, adding a new node to the branch. This structure makes it really easy to roll back to prior versions. Programmers can then push their local changes to a central code repository like GitHub, where their code would be merged with the branch in the online repository. Collaborators can then pull these changes and merge them into their own local branches, resolving conflicts with relative ease. Machine learning projects, like other programming projects, can be version controlled with Git. But there's one caveat. Data. Oftentimes, ML or data science projects involve lots of experimentation, data analysis, visualization, etc. Loading data into memory could take minutes at a time, and training could take hours or even days. ML code can be run with traditional code compilers slash interpreters, but these will run all your code at once, and it can become really annoying to have to rerun your entire program when you're just trying to experiment with a tiny bit of code. Enter Jupyter Notebooks, which let users run individual cells of code, so now if you have to load gigabytes of data into memory, you only need to do that once. Notebooks also make life much easier for data analysis and presentations. So for ML group projects, we can just use notebooks and version control them with Git, right? Not quite. One problem. GPUs. Even simpler neural net models can take a really long time to train without access to GPUs, which can greatly paralyze all the matrix computations that take place during training. Not everyone is one of these bad boys, but even if you did, it might not be strong enough of a GPU for your task. And that's where services like Google Collaboratory come in. Colab for short. Colab is a cloud notebook that connects to your Google Drive, kind of like Google Docs, and makes sharing the same notebook really easy. Furthermore, you get access to Google's GPUs for free. Oh, and as another bonus, Colab easily connects with the files in your drive, making it a pretty popular choice for students. So what's the problem here? Oh, so many. Well, for starters, despite its name, Colab isn't freaking collaboratory, in that multiple people can't edit the same notebook at once. On top of that, Colab loves to disconnect your session, completely eliminating one of the key benefits of using a notebook in the first place. So hope you enjoy sitting in front of your computer, watching your models train for hours on end. Otherwise, you'll come back to find that Colab has disconnected and you'd have to rerun everything all over again. And this is if GPUs are even available. In the free tier, sometimes you'll just get a message telling you that all GPUs are busy, so off. Oh right, Colab has paid tiers. One at $10 per month, and one at $50 per month. These give you more or less guaranteed access to the best GPUs, but if you just want to leave your model running in the background, you do have that option. But of course, only if you buy that $50 per month tier. Anyways, given what we know, how can we leverage all the advantages of Colab while minimizing the disadvantages to create the ultimate group project setup? To reiterate, the core problem that my group encountered is that we would constantly be overriding each other's work, making copies of the same notebook, deprecating them, and manually merging them in the most annoying way possible. Given that Git is an incredible version control tool, it would only make sense to use it with Colab. Get the best of both worlds, the version control and the GPUs. The easiest solution to accomplish this would just be to download the notebooks and add them to GitHub. After your teammates make changes, you can then pull the latest versions using Git, then simply upload back to Google Drive and convert your file to a Colab file. 
This is pretty simple, but following these steps time and time again can get really annoying. Plus, this requires making use of user interfaces, and as a programmer, I don't like that. So I decided to code up a little solution that can automate this process. Also, quick fun fact, after I finished working on the script, I found a Medium article that describes a very similar project about a Colab command line tool. Of course, I'll link both this article and the author's code in the description. Anyways, my initial thought was to build a solution that is similar to that command line tool. However, uploading slash updating would be an issue in this case, as once users push to GitHub, they would also need to remember to run a script to upload their changes to Colab, which can get messy for the user. Instead, it'd be much easier to somehow have GitHub automatically update the Colab file in Google Drive. This setup makes it easy to work with Colab, as aside from occasionally running a download script, users only need to use Git to manage their version control. With this design in mind, it's time to write the code. I won't go into detail here, link will be in the description, but the key point I wanted to touch on is that I had to make heavy use of Google Drive's API to automate the whole uploading and downloading process. This means I had to create a new project in Google Cloud, add logic to handle authentication, call the API, and then create a helper Google Drive class that contains all this logic. I decided to break the code into two additional files, download file and update drive, both of which make use of the Google Drive class I wrote. With this step done, I then had to figure out a way to have GitHub automatically update Google Drive. Thankfully, this step wasn't too hard thanks to GitHub Actions. With a simple config file, I was able to have GitHub run the upload script upon getting the latest version of the notebook from any user. And that's the script. At the end of the day, it wasn't too bad to write. To show the effectiveness of this automated approach, here's a quick demo. Let's say you're in a group of two working on an ML project that requires training a large model and you thus need to use a GPU in your training. All your partner did was start the project and share it with you, leaving the rest up to you. First, you'd want to create a new GitHub repo and get it working with the scripts and config that I provided. Follow the instructions listed in the readme of the GitHub library to get everything set up. Then, if you haven't already, run the download script to get the latest version of the Colab file as a Jupyter Notebook. Now you can continue developing as needed, adding all the remaining logic. Once you're done, simply push to GitHub and watch as Colab will get automatically updated. Now you can train your model on your Colab notebook using the GPU. And that's it. If you want, you can always rerun the download script to get the version of the notebook that contains the output from the training. And all your other teammates need to do is a quick git pull of the repo to continue making changes locally on their computer. Again, feel free to check out the readme for this project to follow these steps. We'll be happy to answer questions and get feedback in the comments. At the end of the day, I think I have a pretty good setup that while a bit of a pain to initially get started with, makes working on group projects really smooth using Google Colab. But of course this is all subjective. What's considered ideal to me can be pretty unappealing to others. There are also alternative competitor services to Google Colab, like Paperspace and Kaggle Notebooks. I haven't had too much time to use these myself, but there have been some great videos made discussing these alternatives, which you should definitely check out. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and if you found any part of this video either helpful or entertaining, consider subscribing. I have some really exciting ML slash AI related videos on the horizon, so hope to see you in the next one.